Hi, I'm Kenzie Fell, producer and co-host of McGowan Braybender's podcast channel, Side Effects. We are welcoming a special guest today who is doing double duty for McGowan Braybender. Kristen Hostetter is the Senior Absence Management Product Manager at Lincoln Financial Group. She is our presenter this month for our McGowan Braybender Learning Center, and her knowledge about absence management is unmatched. She is the perfect candidate to discuss this topic that companies are facing every single day. Kristen has been with Lincoln Financial Group for just over five years and has been working in the absence arena for nearly 15 years. We are so excited to learn more about the rules of paid leave and employee absences. Without further delay, Kristen Hostetter. I'm Scott McGowan. I'm Kenzie Fell. And I'm Anne Marie Singleton. Now, I think even for our listeners, too, I think what's important is um, we might be right, we might be wrong, but one thing is we're not afraid. Our goal is to get you to think about things a little differently. And we're unscripted. We just have free reign for 20 minutes. Welcome to Side Effects with an egg. Welcome to Side Effects. Good morning, Emery. How good are morning. you? Great. How are you, Kenzie? I'm good. We have a special guest here today, Kristen. How good are you? Morning. I'm good. Good morning. Thank you. For Welcome to me. Ohio. Thank you. Yeah. So we learned a little bit about you in your intro. Um, Where did you join us from this morning? And can you tell us a little bit more about you and about Lincoln? Yeah, absolutely. I um, I come from Lincoln Financial Group. I flew in from Denver last night. Um, Lincoln is a market leader in absence and disability management, and we are so excited excited about helping employers work through all of the complexities that come with their leave policies. Yes, complexities indeed. Anytime you deal with a workforce, it's complex to begin with. And then mm -hmm. when you add a complication on top of that, like leave, it becomes really, <laughs> really interesting. Right. Can you explain to our listeners what is absence management? Absence management means so many different things. <laughs> and I think the answer varies depending upon who you ask. So it's a great question to start us off. Um, I consider FMLA to be really the foundation of absence management. But it's, it's much broader than that. So absence management is really the full continuum from keeping an employee at work to managing their time when they're missing work and then bringing them back successfully. So there are a lot of different programs that can play into absence management. I mentioned FMLA is really the base, but then we have other programs such as short-term disability, workers' compensation, all of the different activities happening at the state level, which could be an entirely different topic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, ADA, workers comp, all sorts of different programs. Yeah, so I think, I mean, it's a very broad continuum and um, some employers have to deal with all of those, some of them only portions of them, but no matter what, you have to work with having your employees at work as often as possible. That's the whole point of having a <laughs> workforce. And so, <laughs> One of the components that I think we wanted to explore a little bit further today is specifically company leave or employer leave policies. Yes, and we are seeing just a ton of energy from employers as they're building out company leave policies. And there's a lot of different reasons that they're doing that. Um, they're spending a lot of time building out paid parental leaves. I think we hear paid family leave in the news all of the time. Um, and then they're expanding some of their other policies, such as their sabbaticals and their personal leaves and even bereavement at times. Yeah, so I was talking with an employer, um, actually a, a client of ours in the Columbus area, Columbus, Ohio, and they allow each of their employees once a year, a 30 day period to go and find themselves or do something. like a mental health leave. Yes. Like um, they can write a paper, they can do a blog, they can um, hike a mountain, they can take a vacation. Wow. It's paid and it's every employee. It's so funny. I was on a trip a few years ago and there was a man that joined this trip and his company had paid for him to go do something that he would not otherwise have done. Wow. Same so sort of idea. Is the whole company off then that entire month? No, no, no. Everyone has to schedule it. Okay. They don't shut down. So it's scheduled. Um, but everyone has the opportunity. And it's not just, well, this group of leaders or this group of managers or this particular division. It's mm -hmm. every company. Interesting. My my mom worked for a company that had an Italian group 
um, come in and buy out their company. And they did shut down for an entire month. Everyone got the month off. And so there was no production happening in that month. And she said it was wild because they didn't know what to do because they were working with American leave policies and then the Italian, Italian leave policies. And she said it caused a hubbub. <laughs> right. Oh, I'm sure. Yep. Yeah. So, so from your perspective, what is driving the approach to leave policies? There is just so much happening, and I think employers are faced with different challenges. So they have their business objectives that they need to meet, but they are simultaneously faced with an interesting workforce. So people are living longer, they're staying in their jobs longer, which means that we have a lot of different generations all in the workforce at the same time. And we have low unemployment in our economy, um, so it, it's challenging to attack attract and retain talent. Um, so employers are faced with finding new and innovative ways to attract people and have them stay. And one of the common themes that we continue to hear about is employees desiring flexibility. And that's all different kinds of flexibility, which flows perfectly into leave policies because there is so much that you can do uh, with leave policies. And I think um, some of the priorities of the different generations are really driving that so yeah and so we we've hosted a few podcasts uh, on millennials and Kenzie's a <laughs> millennial and <I> um, <laughs> we, we've talked about how they're changing the workforce and really becoming the largest population of those employed despite the fact that workers are living longer and also working longer um, do you believe that millennials have changed the face of these policies? Absolutely. I don't think that a dollar amount on a salary is necessarily the top driver for millennials a lot of times. They're looking for a work-life balance, and that means a solid leave policy that's going to allow them to take care of the things that are important to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think there's a collision, and I know this is probably for another podcast, but I think <laughs> there's a collision between putting in good policies um, or policies that are effective for the workforce that you have and those that are making the decisions about that because there are people m my age and I'm not a millennial or older and I feel sometimes like that's not an important thing for me so why would that be an important thing for my company mm -hmm. and getting information from experts like you and others inside of a company about what really will drive a workforce because I would immediately go to pay. Well, we pay you yeah. well, like you should work. Right. And they're like, well, I'll take less money. Can you give me every Friday off in the summer? I have another friend who has every Friday off in the summer, the whole company. Yes. They have That's summer crazy. hours. <laughs> the heck are summer hours, right? In a, in, a, in a school, I get summer hours. This is a corporation, mm -hmm. um, but it's a demand of the workforce and it keeps them happy. So I think there's a real value in talking to someone like you um, and your expertise yeah. and bringing that lens because we've got, you know, folks in, in senior positions who, who can't see why that's valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Question, is vacation time part of this employer leave policy? <laughs> it's such a good question. And I feel silly asking it, but I feel like other people would want to know. <laughs> no, it's a great question, and it is. It plays into a lot of the leave policies policies that we have. So when you think about things like short-term disability or paid family leave, oftentimes there's some type of coordination that has to happen for wait periods where someone can receive pay from vacation or PTO. Um, I think one of the main differences is that it's often more of a pay practice. So it's administered kind of from a payroll or HRI, HRIS perspective okay. and follows um, you know, it's an accrual, so there's there's some different rules around that type of benefit. Okay, so what are some interesting policies that you are starting to see these days? <laughs> there are so many interesting policies, and we've done research around the different types of policies. And I think if you were to look today, it would be something different than you saw yesterday because it's just changing that rapidly. Um, a few years ago, I probably would have said paid family leave, but I think all of the activity at the state level level for paid family leave is really driving employers to make that much more common. Um, so some of the some of the interesting things that we've started to see are extended bereavement leaves and oh, wow. Uh, that's for different types of relationships. Mm -hmm. And then, Anne-Marie, you mentioned uh, the employer that's offering time off to go do something unique. We're seeing more of that. So paid, paid leave where an employer <laughs> will give paid you time squared. off. <laughs> yes. And then 
some money to go do something. Right. Um, and then pet friendly leaves, which is something important to me when I think about my puppy. It was so nice to be able to, you know, I work from home just to be able to, you know, be there as your toilet training a puppy. Oh, yeah. Um, but lots of different things out there. Well, you just got your puppy a, a year ago now. Yeah, Wouldn't that have been nice? Yeah. <laughs> he's one. Yeah, so it's we're a pet friendly workplace here and we have a, a lot of young people and millennials and um, with a lot of puppies Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe they don't have you know children yet or they're not going to have a family because that's what they've chosen to do and um, you know that's a really great idea is to think about well they also have personal lives it just happens to be um, you know focused on a different um, subject matter than than a than a child and I think that you know people have often felt like hey why do they get that and I don't you Mm -hmm. know Paternity. Um, yeah, I, I love, love that. that. Paternity. Such a good name. <laughs> yeah, that's very cool. Well, I think it, it's just going to be interesting to see how this continues to evolve. And you mentioned earlier, um, the workforce is very tight and competitive right now. Yep. It's still that way and has been for a very long time. And employees are looking for something that's going to attract them to an employer and, and make that sticky and keep them there. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm sure that people who um, run companies and started companies never in a million years imagined that they were going to have to be creative <laughs> in this space in order to attract <laughs> and retain employees. Like, yeah. shouldn't pay be enough? Um, but that's why we have experts like you and folks in, um, you know, in human resource positions to make sure that they're keeping up with the trends. Right. So, you know, when we're talking about this, um, we've got employers listening. What are some key tips that we can give an employer that that's looking to implement something that's different or outside of what they're doing today? Sure. So I think we've kind of hinted around the first two a lot. Um, but the first tip I would say is just to understand what business need they're trying to solve. So if it's attracting talent, retaining talent, um, perhaps there were low engagement scores from an employee engagement survey. These are all good reasons to look at leave policies. Mm-hmm. I think the second key thing, and we've talked a lot about this, is really understanding the employee population. So Mm -hmm. where are they located? Maybe it's in a state that has generous leave policies already. Um, If it's not, that could be a good opportunity. And then understanding, you know, different things about the employees, their age, um, income, so whether or not a leave is paid or unpaid, um, gender and value system is a huge one. So what what are the, your employees, what do they value, what's important to them? And understanding that will really help drive something that's going to be beneficial to the population. Yeah, so um, just a curious question. How would you, I mean, off the top of your head, how would you recommend they begin to gather this type of data? <laughs> that's such a good question. So mm-hmm. I think during the interview process, that's a, a good opportunity. I think employee engagement surveys are always a great place to put those questions, especially around value system Um, and then I think exit interviews so when people are leaving understanding why it is that they're leaving and if there is something that could have been done differently Mm -hmm. um, because that might give some insight into ways to increase flexibility and leave policies. Mm -hmm. What's your opinion around um, a check-in with a new employee so they've been here 90 days or or 180 days or some somewhere in between and asking them then, you know, why did you choose our organization? And, you know, what, what's been better than you thought and, and maybe what didn't materialize that you were expecting? What's your opinion of that? Absolutely. I think that's a great opportunity, especially since they're still new employees, that, you know, is going to show them that they that you value what they have to say and also give you some good insight so that you can make those adjustments and mm-hmm. retain that person. Yeah, I think those employees have the, the best, freshest ideas, and they're still willing to share them at that stage absolutely um, so oh, yeah. it's just a cool time to capitalize <laughs> on on that data mm-hmm. so what would be the next few steps after you figure out your population and engagement I think it's it's starting to get into the details and in my mind when I think about the steps that an employer should take I'm going to use details more than once because details are so important so it's going to be outlining the basics of a policy so once you understand your employees and what's you know, what's important to them, where they're located. It's starting to articulate what that policy looks like. So who do you, who are you trying to target with the policy? Um, Why do you want to give them time away from work? And what does it take? So, you know, do they have to have a certain number of uh, months of service with you or years of service? And how do you kind of outline the basics of that specific? 
Yeah. Have you have you ever come across an employer who has phenomenal opportunity for leave and the employees don't really understand how to utilize it? <laughs> or someone comes in, they're new, it's been explained to them during the interview process, and suddenly they're taking advantage of it and the uh, employees that have been there a while are like, why do the new people get all of this? Like, have you ever seen that in your experience? Absolutely. I think a couple of things. So generally when we're talking about leave, supervisors are a population that we sometimes miss. So getting training to managers and supervisors to help them explain to employees what policies are available is so beneficial and often overlooked. And I think the other, um, the other thing I would say there is just taking credit for what you're doing. So if you introduce a new leave plan, tell people about it. It's great work <laughs> right. that you've done. Yeah. Right. And if you don't tell employees, they don't know about it and you've missed an opportunity to really engage with them and show the value that you have to offer. Right. So you're doing a great thing. We just want to make sure that they don't, you know, create ill will out of something that should be creating goodwill. Yeah, and exactly. that is, you know, the employees that were here maybe don't understand because the new hires got it in their packet or it was in the handbook, but nobody read it. So mm -hmm. we just want to be sure that we we Let say, yes, shout it from the rooftops if you have an excellent leave policy. Mm -hmm. So during this planning stage, what is the biggest mistake that employers make? I would say that it's not obtaining buy-in. So there are different audiences that we're going to need to obtain buy-in from, and that's going to be senior leaders, so the people that are signing the check, because there's almost always um, you know, a cost to a leave policy, right. especially sure. if you make it paid. Um, so you need to tie that back to a business objective. And then I think I, I mentioned managers, but these are the people that are directly impacted by leaves. Oh, and yeah. when they have employees gone, it doesn't feel good. They're missing, <laughs> <laughs> they're missing yep. their people and there's so much work that falls to someone else. So giving that set of people some tools to work within the leave policy and really setting them up for success um, is is key. And then we talked about just taking credit f with the employee population. So just getting buy-in from all of those different areas is really crucial. Random question, how much does paid leave typically cost a company? Because it feels like it could be all over the place. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it could be anything. Excellent. I think um, there's there's some studies out there that show that it, it oftentimes doesn't end up costing if it's tied back to a business objective. So let's just say that the leave policy was implemented to help retain talent. Mm -hmm. If you look at that and, and look at the actual change in talent retention, something you perhaps can measure. Yeah, yeah. there's something measurable there. Mm -hmm. So it, it depends upon the policy. If, if it's paid, it's obviously going to cost more than unpaid. And if it's tied to a business objective that you can you can track and report on, then I think it's it, it could be very different numbers. Right. Yeah. It could be a wash. It could be yeah. um, it could be valuable. Right. Yeah. It Hopefully it's valuable. Adding. So here's a question. How, I mean, if you had to put a percentage on paid versus unpaid in some of these policies you see, what would you ballpark that at today? I think today probably more of them are unpaid, but the trend is going to paid. And I think a lot of times employer policies follow what's happening at the state and federal level. And when you s read the news and you see all of the various states implementing paid family and medical leave, employers are following suit and introducing more paid. So I, I mm -hmm. think that percentage will continue to go up. Interesting. Yeah. That's really cool. Well, I'm really enjoying this conversation. I think we could talk about this <laughs> all day. Morning. <laughs> um, I know you're going to talk about this for another hour and a half here shortly with, um, you know, I think, how many people registered today? 80, we have a packed 90? house. Yes, it's so 100. 100. Oh, good. Yeah. Yes. 100. No pressure. You, uh, right. You know, talking to Kenzie and I is just like talking to 100 Just a little people. preview before, yeah. So, but we appreciate you doing this because there's many employers that can't come out today to talk about this um, and to hear you speak. But this is such an important topic. So is there anything else that you would leave our listeners with as we wrap up our conversation today about leave? I think so. I, we've talked a lot about employer leave policies and company-sponsored leave. What we didn't talk a lot about is all of the activity at the state level. And there is so much changing with state leave laws that I think it's important that employers stay very close to it and apprised of what's going on. Um, there are a lot of different resources out there um, from 
carriers and from vendors and TPAs, and one of those is from Lincoln. So I would just encourage um, listeners to you know visit with their Lincoln representatives to get added to our monthly absence advisor or look at other sources too so that you stay aware of all that's happening at the state level. Yeah, and we focus specifically on um, what I would call the fun part of leave yes. this morning. <laughs> Um, yes, <laughs> I think this is the, the really fun part versus having a disability or being off for, for something else. Um, but it all has to work together, right? So the coordination of that. So your yeah. point to understanding what's happening at the state level, what you're required to do as yeah. an employer, as well as making sure your policies all work in conjunction with each other, one into yes. the other. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason for um, expert advice. That's the reason we have you here today, and we yeah. really appreciate that. So, Kristen, if people have more questions or looking for more information, where should they go? Oh, they they can come um, to many of their partners that they work with. Um, I think we're all very engaged at what's happening. Um, and certainly re feel free to reach out to your Lincoln benefit folks. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us on our Side Effects episode. If you have any ideas or questions about this topic or future topics you would like to see, you can email Kenzie at HealthierBirthdays.com. Or Anne at HealthierBirthdays.com. Perfect. And we thank you so much for um, joining us before your Learning Center today. Yes, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Yep. And have a great day, everyone. Thank you.